Okay, it's live. So it's been a while since I've done one of these and I'm gonna paint the same still life that I did the other day with the two books and the house plants. So I thought it would be fun to do a version in different light. Trying to measure out everything. I want it to be somewhat similar. are always really sloppy. I am not too picky about them looking right. I don't know if I'll be doing much talking during this, but, um, yeah, just thought it'd be fun to see the process because I know it's a little more of a complicated scene. chicken is almost in the center. Probably move the lamp up a little bit. And my trusty kneaded eraser. I love these things. So what I'm doing when I'm drawing this out is I want to make sure all the negative spaces are correct and it's going to help me measure this out and make sure nothing's terribly out of place. And I'm always looking at lines, kind of like measuring angles of everything in relationship to each other composition isn't exactly like the other one that I did, but I don't really care. So we have the basic gist in here.
Not bad. We have this fern in the back, right next to the window, getting some light. All right, I think we're ready to paint. I don't know if you can see, sorry, the camera must have slipped a little bit. Let me try to fix it. Alright, so let's get started. First things first, I always try to make sure that I start with a relatively clean palette. And I probably should have done all this before, but I didn't. So you'll have to wait. And I usually try to make sure that all of my colors that I need are replenished, which they are not, but it shouldn't take me too long. I pack everything in these bags, so all the colors are separated. I've shown this several times, but there might be some new viewers out there. But it makes um, refilling colors really quick and easy. And when you're out painting plain air, where the light's changing a lot, you really want to have everything easily accessible so that you can just not even worry about it. Painting plain air is typically a race against time. So I've got my greens here. almost done. I can kind of uh, look at the scene and get a feel for what colors I'm going to be using, which helps so I don't waste a lot of paint. For these house plant scenes, I go through a lot of like earthy tones and some of the greens as always I blow through the ultramarine blue I really wish they made giant tubes all right so I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna use my biggest brush first, which is this, I think it's a one inch to number 10 Tricol. And I'm going to very quickly, I'm not super concerned about the colors, but I do want them to be pretty bright. I just want to block in everything quick. And I'm squinting, trying to pay attention to the values. And my paint's probably gonna get pretty drippy as it usually does at this process, but not to worry. So right now I'm looking for the colors that I want to pop 
which are usually these really bright greens in the leaves. I tone them down a tiny bit with some reds because you never want to use it like pure out of the tube, in my opinion. I think that's what makes a lot of greens look really artificial. So I'm putting in a lot of these brighter greens, just gonna kind of cover the canvas. And I'm gonna try to let some of these greens come through. It's the plan anyway. And then for here, whoops, eh, I don't really care. This is my staghorn fern. It's a pretty cool plant. I don't know if you've seen the latest stuff, but I've been weirdly addicted to plants lately. So right now I'm still measuring stuff. Kind of just blocking in points that's gonna help me later on. I'm gonna go in and uh, I don't remember the name of this plant. Looking at the negative space. And I try to pay attention a little bit to subtle color differences at this point. So it's kind of a more golden green at the tips of these leaves. And then towards the bottom, it definitely gets darker and cooler. And there's more contrast. So while I'm at it, let's do some of these darks that I'm seeing. And laying out all these values is just helpful overall. Like once you have your darks blocked in, you kind of get a feel for the, the drawing and you can usually start flying through the process. There's a really annoying fly going around the house right now. So as you can tell, my drawing is not perfect and I'm not caring too much about getting everything looking just right. I fix a lot with um, when I go over the, the shapes, the negative shapes later on, try to carve out the, the drawing a little better. I'm gonna get this little chicken butt in here. It's 
funny. I, I swear this chicken moved. <laughs> Maybe the cats moved it or something. plant back here right next to the window it's got some really nice pinks going on and the sergeant book is here it's not quite this green but it is pretty bright There's a lot of uh, reflective light going on it right now. Oops, that's too saturated. I'll fix it later. Get this. In here, all right. So, yeah, I'm still my main focus is this white. I do not want any white. Water, watering can. All right. Putting in the window frame is pretty helpful with measuring. Going a little more opaque. Oops, didn't mean to do that, but this tablecloth is getting some really bright light towards the window. And it's a little more blue. Put in this darker part. And now I'm going to try to do, I should have done this first actually, but the 
light part behind everything. So I'm gonna really water down my paint and I'm going to try to exaggerate what I'm seeing. I want it to be pushed back. Sorry, I'm trying to get the right color. So there's some from this retaining wall that we have. And I am gonna try to get a somewhat accurate portrayal of what's outside, but in a blurry kind of fashion to where there's not a lot of detail. But there are some really pretty colors out there and I think it's gonna tell a little bit of a story about the environment and you know what's out what's outside, what's in our dirty yard. It's obviously not the most important part, so I will be really pushing it back. There's a little bit of this bluish green ivy that's on the retaining wall. I'm gonna try to hint that in there a little bit. And you guys might not know it when you look at the painting, but I will. And I think it's kind of cool. So I've got this really bright green. These are part of our tomato plants. They're overgrown and they're in the spotlight. This is gonna look nice right here, I hope, because this plant is mostly dark. So it's gonna have a nice silhouette against this light, crazy green. I'm gonna go back and still work on this kind of reddish purple. I'm also leaning towards this red because it's a complementary to the plant colors. So it might be might be nice. Kind of a purpley. And I am almost definitely going to be going back over all this. So I'm not too concerned about it looking just right. Because I'll want to define these shapes better. And when I squint, the lightest parts are these spots where the sun is hitting 
the ground outside. So with, this is quite opaque paint, but I'm going in and just trying to get these bits of light in. And it's also gonna define, you can use some of the edges to define like the window and there's some light on this pot. And then there's more light here. Try to lighten this even more if I can. All right. So, pretty much everything is blocked in. Now to go back into everything and work on the values a little bit. So right now I see this John Singer Sargent book and when I'm squinting, I can I can barely tell what it is. So that's going to be a challenge because there's so much reflective light on it. All right, my next task. Now that I've got it all pretty blocked in is to go over everything again and really focus on the values. trying to pay attention to subtle color differences now. So as you get onto the, what is it, the left side of this pot, it's darker and has this warm shadow on it. And just keep squinting. But you'll see that the right side is a little bit cooler. It's still dark. Like when I'm squinting, it's probably darker than that. But we all know how gouache is and most likely going to dry a different color than it appears. I think because I'm mixing brands, my paint is, has been doing a lot of weird stuff lately. I might just try to simplify it down to one or two brands, but mixing the M Graham and Windsor Newton is giving me a lot of weird effects. Okay. I'm going to darken this lampshade. It's not super dark, but When I squint, it's 
probably about the same value as up here. So it needs to be darker. Maybe a little lighter than that. And it's getting warmer. As we go over to the left side, just like the pot. It's important to get in this um, post. Because everything is relative. And it's going to help us in the future. Sorry, I'm not the best at talking and painting but it's all practice. So the values have changed a little bit in this plant and um, I'm gonna try to pay attention and get the subtle color changes in this. These leaves are darker and they're warmer at the top and get cooler towards the bottom. A lot of, I love this plant because it has so many variations and shapes of the leaves. It's so delicate. So when you're painting the, the leaves, it's important to look at their shapes. Look at the negative shapes in them. This side is cooler. I'm trying to use my brush stroke to tell a little bit about the leaves. The direction does matter.
So the spot that I left, uh, it's not quite this bright. So I'm gonna try to tone it down a little bit. Maybe leave a tiny bit of the, the bright yellow. I might even take it all out. Cause it isn't, it's not that bright. Maybe try some dry brush. Okay. Let's work on the silhouette of this plant back here. There's a little bit of green down there. I'm trying to have a little more brush control and work on the edges in my work. It's not easy. The light has changed a lot, I think, from when I started. You just have to work with it, I guess. in this little prayer plant that I have back here. It's going to be just very loosely put in there. work on this silhouette, try to make it really sharp.
Okay. Work on this little chicken butt. Sorry, I'm not super talkative. So I'm squinting and not even trying to paint the actual subject, which is the book cover. I'm breaking it down into shapes and hoping that that's enough. All these really bright greens Coming in from outside. And then this table. Might as well put this face in here. This book is the art spirit. And I painted it a couple times so far. It's really fun. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of this flesh tone. to hint at what's going on in this book. I see little bits of pink here and there. I'm gonna try to define this pot a little better. There's just a lot of interesting colors going on in this book because it's one of those really shiny covers. So as I get further along with the painting, my brush sizes usually get smaller as well. But overall, in general, I always start with the biggest brush that I can. It just helps you simplify it. I 
this. has some nice darks going on. And I can see her face just barely between all this crazy reflections. I'm gonna try to get her hair in. Maybe the shape of her face. I don't know. Sorry, the camera's going down. And I've got a couple of books over here. Draw these in real quick. Let's get in this pot as well. I'm always kind of flipping back and forth, fixing up values here and there. Okay, 
sitting there. This pot has a lot of warmth in it. And it's getting cooler on the sides towards the windows. Do a palette cleanup right now. A clean palette is important for clean colors. And I think that's something I could probably work on. But I also have to remember that that old saying that value does all the work and color gets all the credit. It's so true. It's really all about values. Let me uh, refill my water cup real quick. I'll be back. Getting there, making progress. Moving down a brush size, so this is my quarter inch. And now I can start working a little bit on the details that I want. So some of these little things are gonna matter later on. I'm gonna get this chicken comb. So, going to try to get in some of these darkest darks. I always love putting in these little bands of color into the house plants. Because it's so effective at kind of describing them. Just a simple line. Okay.
putting in a little more more values. When I squint at this book, this white binding seems a lot lighter than it actually is. And on this side, it gets even darker. And there's a little bit of reflective light from the yellow tablecloth that I have. It's getting a little bit lighter right here. 